Assalamu salam law. Peace to the gods and goddesses. I'm your brother in the struggle, brother minister Alifa Law. And today, family, we're going to cover the fourth state of matter, plasma. Today's subject is coming from Messenger Elijah Muhammad's book, The Theology of Time, which is also a tape series that was published in 1972. This particular chapter is from June the 18th of 1972. I'd like to open up with the quote directly from the messenger's message to help guide us through this age of mess. The messenger says, and I quote, I only want to bring you into the knowledge of yourself. Why are you nothing, meaning a zero? Are you in any way tallied with the universe? Yes. Elijah, why did you make the zero round? Because that's the way the universe was before the creation of man. Out of it, we came by one who was self-created. He didn't come from the creation of another. He's the creator himself, the first. Remember that. He made himself in a circle so that the wisdom of his self-creation could keep going to give knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to you and me. I want us to remember that. Out of this darkness came one, and then he took the unknown and put it in front of himself. For what? To produce the known. That's why the zero goes in front. To make more zeros, he puts more up there besides zero, and it keeps producing or making this one tenfold more powerful than it is, just by adding zeros. What are you trying to drive us to, Muhammad? I'm saying that the more of you who knew nothing and was like that zero are added to the one God, you become something. I'm only now making figures of us and from the figures we teach you and you can understand. Since we started from nothing, but God himself started from nothing. We're going to something because the creator found something more in the darkened circle than he had thought that he would find. He's not here today, that same man, but he laid a base for a wise God to come and get a platform out of his work of self-creating. Once every 25,000 years, there's a new God that's been coming up in the past. So God taught me that wisdom would always run through to about 25,000 years. Then they would change and bring in another one. All the gods that ruled, as you didn't know, they ruled by ones and not by just the same one. This is why you are taught God is one. That's right, but it's not the same God. All praise is due to the Supreme Allah God who came in the person of the Master Fard Muhammad to whom all praises are due forever for his first, his last, and his only messenger Sakin or messenger of God in person the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. So here we see in the messenger's message, countless powerful jewels. How did the black man, the original man, how did the creator produce creation? How did the mind produce matter? How did your ancestors produce the mathematics of all that we see today. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad once asked our Savior about 
the possible and the impossible. And Master Far Muhammad explained to him, he said, brother, we don't believe in the impossible. How can we believe in the impossible when we say that once upon a time, the universe did not exist? There were no moons, no planets, no people, no ants, no birds, no atoms, no comets, no meteors. There was nothing but infinite darkness. And out of that darkness, God sparked life. But how? We wasn't physically there. So we have to use mathematics to understand the thinking of God. I know all your life you have been taught that God was a mystery, that nothing produced something, that there was an effect without a cause. I know the wisest white folks in the world taught you in school and college and universities that there was some big bang. But why was there a big bang? What sparked the darkness? When you study the planet that we live on and you study the 8 billion people that live on this planet, they all have a basic consensus that come out in three different ways. The secular world, the intelligentsia, the educated ones, who are very smart, smarter than me, they basically look at it from a scientific perspective. So the professors are basically say, okay, in, in a nutshell, it goes like this. You had the Big Bang that blew up the atoms and set off this chain reaction that sparked our universe. Okay. That's one theory. Then you have over 4,000 mystery God teachers known as every type of Christian, Muslim, Jew, Buddhist, Hindu, Taoist, you name it. And they all, in their own way, teach of some type of mystery, magical, supernatural God. There are some FOIs and MGTs that are taking and polluting the original divine direct teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, where in the year 1972, he explained to us a theory may or may not be true. He said, but we don't want to go with theories. We don't want to go with guesswork. We need a man that knows what he's talking about today. You have to have knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. What is the messenger's concept of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding? He teaches us that knowledge is to listen, know, and observe. Knowledge is the foundation. Wisdom is to make your knowledge known. And understanding is a picture one makes in his or her mind based on knowledge. So we're born in faith, but we grow in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding due to our experiences and experiments in our universe. There is no mystery God, period. There never was a mystery God. There's not a mystery God today, and there will be no mystery God in the future. There is no such thing as you physically dying and a white ghost come floating out your mouth as a spiritual soul and floating up into the white clouds and you're going before this big white Jesus or white light Allah and pure neural light and you're going to have these magical white angels with big white feathers and white stork birds flying around with babies in white diapers and all this white supremacy that have been misleading the world for the past 6,000 years. No, no, no. You will not get beamed aboard the mother plane. There will be no Anunnaki coming down from some spooky distant planet toy out there in the darkness of space. You are born from a human being. Every man and every woman begets or produces a likes. That's just the reality. That's the hawk. 
The Holy Quran teaches us in chapter 22, verse 6, Allahu and Aha, the God is nothing but reality, the pure truth, the raw truth. I know, I know. You like to show off. Everybody want to wear the messenger shoes. Everybody think they're smarter than Master Farad Muhammad, wiser than the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, greater than the 24 scientists. They know more than the original man that been teaching these teachings for over 76 trillion years. Spooky, foolish mortals. You can mix, dilute, and tamper with these teachings all you want. You can mix with all the pseudosciences out there, but it's going to do nothing but be purified because we hurl the truth at falsehood until we knock its brains out. The very brain cell, the very neuron, generating a power equal to 170 thousandth of a volt of electricity, your thoughts traveling 24 billion miles per second around our universe covering 238 quintillion, 640 quadrillion miles. You have never and you will never find that mystery God. Stop wasting your time looking for that mystery God. Stop wasting your potential worshiping nothing as though it is something. There are no devils deep down under the ground in the magma or the melted nickel or the hot lava waiting to burn you forever. All of it is a lie. It's a spooky trick taught by the imperialists, taught by the colonists, taught by the 10%, the rich the slave makes of the poor. Why? So they can control you. So they can indoctrinate you. They want to bully you. They want you in a cult with them. Why do they want you in their little cults? They want you in your cult in their cults because they know they're going to enslave you. They can get your money out your pocket and put it in their pockets. They can have you like an automaton, have you like a robot, and like, yo, they could bark over there and like a pit bull, you just go attack. They ain't going to do nothing. <laughs> They'll get you to do it because you're blind, deaf, and dumb. Not literally, but many of our people just simply can't see the truth. They don't want to hear this truth. They don't want to teach these truths. Why? There's persecution when you speak the truth. Our lessons teaches us in the 24 principles of Islam, a Muslim knows what to say, how to say it, when to say it, where to say it, and whom to say it to. The messenger said, I come with plain truth, simple truth. Islam is mathematics. If a person is teaching the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and you don't hear them telling you where the messenger said it, when the messenger said it, they're lying. <laughs> they spooking you up. They're, they're plagiarizing some other form of trichnology. See, you, you, you be like, well, you can't mix oil with water. People that know science can. <laughs> I mean, if you go to an Italian restaurant, they'd be like, um, give me some balsamic, whatever. They'd be like, oh, we can mix oil with, 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 with um, vinegar, with water, as long as we put some egg white in there. You got you to gotta know the math. And most of our people just don't have that mathematical way of thinking. So we look at the universe in three dimensions, in three stages, solids, liquids, and gas. Our body is solid right now. But when we was in our Abu or in our father, we was a liquid. When we was in our Umi or our mother, we was a liquid. Scientists may call it a zygote. Uh, you'd be like, Dad, oh, don't. Take and have sex with mommy. I'm just curious. Let me let me go back in time. I want to see how did I come about? Where was I before I was in you? He'd be like, son, I drink this stuff right here. It's atoms of hydrogen bonded with oxygen, H2O. It's called water. It's something unique about this water. See, if you take this water and I sit this glass of water on the table and you come downstairs tomorrow and look at it, it'll be there. If you come downstairs next year, it won't be there. Where did it go? What happened? Those atoms turned back 
into the atmosphere. Atoms in the water vibrated at such a mathematical level that it turned it into a steam or vapor or gas. In the water, there's tiny living cells known as amoebas. These tiny living cells is already alive in the atoms. When you take your microscope and you look at that water, you'll see all these people swimming all around like, yo, there's millions of us down here. And when daddy drinks that and he eats the vegetation of life, our bones is stone, our flesh is vegetation, our blood is water. The same iron that's in the rocks is the iron that's in your blood. The same calcium that's in the rocks is the calcium in your bones, in your teeth. That in the earth is in you. That in the earth is in the atom. It's in the water. It's in the carbon. It's in the universe. The universe is alive. There is no mystery God, family. So you have solids, liquids, and gases. You have ice cubes. You have boiling water at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. And if those atoms slow down and slow down and slow down, they turn into solid pieces of ice at 32 degrees. It's the exact same atoms. It's the exact same material. We understand that. We know if we put this water in the tea kettle and sit it on the stove and heat it up, once it starts boiling and gets to 212 degrees, what happens? It transforms into steam and steam comes out. It's the same ice cube that we got out the freezer. We just put it in the, in the pot and we put it on the stove and the ice cube will melt and turn back into a liquid. We keep boiling that liquid, it turns right back into a steam. So it is with the human body. So it is with the body temple, the true masjid, the mosque. You have a right and a left temple. You are the bait, Allahi. You are the house of God. There never was a mystery God. The Kaaba, the Ka and the Ba of ancient Kemet or black Egypt, the soul and the spirit, all these things are mere symbols and rituals and languages that we utilize to communicate our spiritual sciences. But the temper centers always come in and transform our spiritual sciences into organized religions. And this is why you have to have the five percenters. The five percenters are the poor righteous teachers who do not believe in the teachers of the 10 percent. See, when the five percent teach, we don't come with all the fancy stuff. We don't have all the pump and the glitter. We don't get a million views, a bunch of likes, a bunch of big checks. And I mean, we don't have all that. We're poor, righteous teachers. We do this by faith. We put our life on the line so that you and your future generations may know the truth. And just like that physical water, that solid, liquid, and gas, the human body is the same way. But there's one thing about this universe that most people don't realize. At the end of the day, you have the fourth state of matter. You have solids, liquids, gas. And when I say gas, gas could be steam. It could be a vapor, depending on what element it is. But you have solids, liquids, gas, and then you have plasma. What do we mean by plasma? Plasma, scientifically speaking, is basically ionized gas that has positive charges and negative charges, protons and electrons, 5 percenters and 10 percenters. And when they touch, boom, they blow, they spark. So your thoughts that travel 24 billion miles per second in the darkness of space, a long time ago. In his book, Our Savior Has Arrived in 1974, the Ambulaj Muhammad gives us the mathematical chronology like this. 
he explains that our moon, some moon is star, the moon is 66 trillion years old. He said six trillion years before that takes us to the star, which is 72 trillion years old. And six trillion years before that takes you to our sun, our shams, which is 78 trillion years old. The messenger's message was and is, we always had six trillion years between each of the manifestations. He teaches us that the sun, moon, and star is not created by Allah, Sapana, White, Taila, and all this other pseudo spooky stuff you hear. He teaches us in the divine sayings that the sun, moon, and star is made and not created. He said, when you make something, you start with something. When you create something, you start with nothing. The sun, we, we could, the sun is hydrogen, helium, oxygen, carbon. You see, it's made of something. Stars are made of the same essence. The moon is made from the planet Earth. You see? No mystery God sparked them. It was mathematical causes and effect that produced the results that we call our solar system. So we know the mathematics. We know the reality of it. We know there is no mystery God. So when the mind sparks the atoms, you have to understand that it sets off a chain reaction. So as we read in the Theology of Time, the message explained that that one that was in the darkness, he began with nothing or the zero. The zero, he said, is like you and me. We're zeros. We're nothing. But what about the science of the zero? He said he began with the circle because he was the circle of himself. And this is how he sparked his universe. Thoughts are traveling in 360 degrees in a circle. Our universe is in a circle. The sun is in a circle. The moon is in a circle. The stars are in a circle. The earth is in a circle. The atoms are in a circle. Your blood cells are in everything in our creation, that the black man, the original man, the Asiatic black man, the maker, the owner, the cream of the planet Earth, God of the universe, sparked, was in 360 degrees. We built in the cipher, on the cipher, as the cipher. There is nothing behind you, above you, under you, or around you that does not have its origin within you, black man, you, black woman. There's no dispute between a man and a woman. Do you see Father God arguing with Mother Nature? This is the law of Mayat, the law of balance, the yin and the yang, the ife, the I Ching, whatever nomenclature you want to use. The same principles taught all over the planet Earth for the past 76 trillion years. Why do we say 76 trillion years, Elijah? He said because it took 2 trillion years for our Earth to come from our sun. So actually the age of the earth and the sun is the same, 78 trillion years old, but it took 2 trillion years for that little ball of fire to get 93 million miles away from our sun, our shams, to have our, the planet Asia, which means world, Asiatic, world citizens. We didn't have no borders back then. All the land masses was connected. It was 71% water. See? So our lessons teach us what? That the planet Earth is 196,940,000 square miles. The land is what? 57,255,000 square miles. The water is what? 139,685,000 square miles. Why? 57,255,000 plus 139,685,000 equals what? 196,940,000 square miles. The original man is the God and owner of the Earth and knows every square inch of it, family. There is no mystery God. If you don't know, Today you know, Salam Allah, the struggle continues.